Trigger finger is a type of tendonitis in the hand, one of the most common that we see. And what happens is the tendon typically has to glide um, in the palm through a series of ligaments, or almost like tunnels, which we refer to medically as pulleys. And with the inflammation that comes with the tendonitis, the tendon swells, and every time it tries to glide into these little tunnels, it gets trapped, and the, the motion of, of moving your finger, it kind of goes click, clunk, rather than having a nice smooth um, motion. It can be quite tender, quite uncomfortable, and sometimes the the parts that are inflamed actually get trapped in a bent position, so it's hard to straighten your finger unless you take your other hand and work on straightening it. So trigger finger should be treated when it's interfering with your quality of life. So if you um, are finding it's annoying because you, you go to, you know, op um, if you go to hold a glass and your finger kind of gets stuck and you can't let go or you hold something smaller like a a pot, you can't put it down because the finger is stuck in a bent position. More commonly, people come because it's sore, and the soreness is what they're looking for treatment of, not so much the actual locking. The treatment for um, trigger finger, you can try conservative management with taking Motrin, Advil. Uh, occasionally, we'll have people try splinting the finger straight. People report that in the morning, they'll often wake up with their finger bent. And so we find if they sleep with the finger straight at night, the tendon is not as likely to get caught, but this doesn't have a very high success rate. Um, we Then the options that we have are injecting, um, injecting and trying to do a procedure through the skin with a needle or doing surgery. The principles of these different treatments are number one is to try to control the inflammation around the tendon, and number two is to make more space for the tendon to glide. So with the cortisone injection, that's direct, trying to control the amount of inflammation in the tendon, which then usually allows it to glide more smoothly. When we do the what's called the uh, percutaneous approach through the skin with a needle, we're injecting cortisone to control the inflammation, but also we're trying to cut with the edge of the needle to open up the tunnel a little bit. This we can only offer for certain fingers, usually the middle two fingers, your middle and your ring finger, other fingers, it's a little bit trickier, a little bit more dangerous because of nerves that are there. When we do the surgery, the goal is simply to open the tunnel where the tendon is most likely trapped and give it free reign to, to, uh, to glide without getting trapped. Recurrence following treatment, if you go the injection route, then we find that with one injection, we can cure about 70% of people. So there'll be some people who'll come back we can offer them a section, second injection. With that second injection, that cures about 50% of people second time around. That gives us an overall cure rate of 85% with the injection approach. If we go the surgery approach, the cure rate is closer to 99.5%. You know, In terms of risk, um, with the surgery, we're opening the skin. Uh, there's a, certainly a slightly greater chance of infection with that approach than with the injection. But, I mean, the risk of infection with this type of an elective procedure is, is pretty small. So that shouldn't be the main deterrent. With the surgery, your recovery time is a little longer. You have some soreness in your palm, can't get your hand wet. So there's definitely some downtime. In terms of, of frequency, we would, I would see easily you know, 10 to 15 trigger fingers a month um, that end up choosing the injection route against maybe one or possibly two that would choose the surgery route. The decision about what to do is the patient's decision, and I think that's one of the things that we pri pride ourselves here at Dartmouth, is that we very much um, will have a good discussion and let people know what the different treatments are, what the, maybe the cost um, differences are, the, what the differences are in complications, in recovery, in success rate, and help people to make the decision that's best for them given their demands in life, their preferences and their values, and make a decision that way.